Our daughters, they're gone. You yes. know this. Yes, but <laughs> what if they could come back? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Caprica. This is another one of those shows that unfortunately got canceled before it really got a chance to take off. But we did get the beginnings, the inklings of a world-spanning, universe-spanning plotline that was falling in the footsteps of everything epic that Battlestar Galactica, the Reimagined series, had kicked off. Now, I've only done the watch-through of this one time in the past. I would totally be down for another watch-through. Um, so when I'm doing the review today, I'm going to be doing some of this based on memory, others based on the wiki. We're going to be diving into some things here as I remember it, and then probably I'll schedule a watch-through at some point in the near future, and we'll see where we can go from that, maybe do some commentary on additional episodes. And I have monsters behind me, so we'll see if, if they end up interrupting the, the video recording at any point. In any case, if this is your first time here, this is where I get to say things like this. Welcome aboard. Hopefully you like the video. If you do, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you get updates like this in the future. Don't forget if you want to support the channel, you can also do so via a membership. You can click that join button down below and join the Adventurers Guild. You can also drop a super thanks on the video and do it that way. And if you want to go above and beyond, you can always join the Patreon page which is that world map. We'll talk about it at the end, though. So without further ado, let's get into Caprica. So if you have never watched the reimagined Battlestar Galactica from the early aughts, uh, it's it's up there. I literally called this my favorite science fiction show of all time uh, when I reviewed it here a few weeks ago on my YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched that episode, make sure to check it out. Um, I do have a playlist here called Best Science Fiction TV Shows. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, check that episode out, because I really do think the Reimagined Battlestar Galactica is the best sci-fi show of all time, in my opinion. The follow-up to this was called Caprica. Um, now, this is a prequel series that was set 58 years before the destruction of the 12 colonies of Cobol. And this focuses on the planet of Caprica, the aforementioned eponymous main planet of the 12 colonies. Is it eponymous? I think that's how you pronounce that word. I could be wrong about that. Anyway, um, it, this is the governmental seat of the 12 colonies. It's where all the culture, art, science happening, all that stuff happens. Um, this is also where the Cylon androids were first created, and this is where everything starts. Now, what's really interesting about this is that we also get sort of the beginnings of the one god religion um, that they're worshipping. And, excuse me, um... There's a lot to unpack in this series because we're dealing with the 12 colonies being at peace. There's religious, religious fanaticism that's bringing together uh, Joseph Adama, who's a criminal. He's a lawyer, but he's got some ties with like the mafia. Um, and then there's the technologicalist, Daniel Greystone, both of whom have lost family members in the, the chaos here. And this is, the, this is what it says about the plot. It says, grief stricken by the loss of his daughter and fueled by obsession, Daniel the wealthy individual, sets out to bring her back using his considerable wealth and sprawling technology corporation. Offered the chance of his own daughter being restored, Joseph wrestles with the notion until he comes face to face with its reality, meaning an android. So there's some really, really, really interesting stuff that's going on in this series, especially with the sort of terrorism going on that's being described with the religious aspects of this. Um, in any case, um, Ronald D. Moore had this to say um, in the fact that Caprica was diff significantly different from the parent season. He says, you don't try to repeat the form formula. Everything about Caprica was designed specifically to not repeat what we had done with Galactica. And um, th I can say that this show is a lot different in terms of of everything because you're not dealing with a post-apocalyptic setting at this point. You're dealing with a thriving population with 12 planets so they had to create the culture and the religion and the language and the science and everything else and that's what makes this show so unique um the cast in this show my god the cast is amazing so we've got eric stoltz as daniel graystone 
We've got Isaiah Morales as Joseph Adamo. We've got Paula Mackelson as Amanda Greystone, um, which if uh, I don't even I'm not going to go into all the other shows that these people have done because it's, it's amazing. Um, Alessandra Torsani as Zoe Greystone. Magda Apanawis as Lucy Rand. We've got Sasha Royes as Sam Adama. Brian Markson as Jordan Durham. Polly Walker mm, as Clarice Widow. And then we've got a supporting cast. One of who is John Piper Fergus as Telmas Fergus. John Piper Ferguson, man, this dude is a Canadian actor who I have I love everything he's in. This guy, I remember the first movie I ever saw him in was this cheesy like martial arts film called Drive from back in like I want to say the late 90s, early 2000s, and he kind of played the long-haired villain in that film, and I've loved him ever since. He he could do no wrong in my book, and I love the fact that he showed up in in this show. Um, but we've got just an amazing cast of characters. Um, if you go through the supporting cast, Patton Oswalt's on here. We've got um, Brian Markinson, Luciana Caro, um, who did Bodasar Galactica as well in Fallen Skies. Just tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of amazing people and amazing cast in here. So, um, the, uh, also Bear McCree returns as the, uh, composer for this show. So this was before Bear McCree got really big. Like he made his name with Battlestar Galactica and then he went on to do, um, to serve as the composer for Caprica. Um, it just, if you've never heard of Bear McCree or you think you've never heard of Bear McCree, think again, because this guy, everything he touches turns to gold, and and he's involved with a lot of stuff these days. You know, he's you know, the the Walking Dead theme, Black Sails theme, Outlander theme, God of War soundtrack. Um, uh, what am I thinking else? Uh, there's other stuff. Oh, the new Masters of the Universe show. Like this guy has his fingers in all sorts of pies, and he cut his teeth on Battlestar Galactica and Caprica. So. What was really unfortunate to me is seeing how Caprica was canceled after only the first, I mean, hadn't even finished the first season run before it was pulled due to low ratings. And what really frustrates me is because this was before we got into the era of streaming, where shows these days um, can have a much smaller audience and yet the networks will continue to air them because you might not be getting all of the you know, all of your views up front when it's airing, you're going to be getting a lot of that in playbacks later on after the fact, because in the streaming area, it doesn't matter when people watch it, as long as people are watching it. And so I feel this show was sort of the the curse of this was it was right at the end of that live TV era. DVR was a thing, of course. Um, I remember watching both Battlestar Galactica and Caprica um, on DVR, watching them after the fact. But streaming hadn't yet kicked in, so we didn't have this phenomenon of watching shows a week, two weeks, three weeks later, you know what I mean, and still capturing those numbers. Um, again, this is, you know, kind of a... How do I explain this? It's it's definitely dark, but I love the fact that we have like the criminal underworld going on, the mafia going on at the same time as this religious fanaticism going on with I think that's the soldiers of the one. Um, I can't remember exactly how that works. Um, I was just watching a trailer before this was the only reason that name's even in my mind. Uh, but I, I'm really inspired now. I want to go back and rewatch this because there's so much that I that I don't remember about this. Um, but it talks about the outline here. Um, it says, Whereas the dark post-apocalyptic reimagined Battles of Galactica revolved around a final struggle for survival, Caprica was concerned with a world intoxicated by success. Roland Moore stated, It's about a society that's running out of control with a wild-eyed glint in its eye. The 12 colonies are at their peak, self-involved, oblivious, ambitious, and mesmerized by the seemingly unlimited promise of technology. Framed against the conflict between the Adamas and the Greystone over the resurrection of loved lost ones in an act of terrorism, the series was meant to explore the ethical implications of advances in artificial intelligence and robotics. And this show also focuses much more on urban locales rather than space. And you've got corporate, political, familial, and personal intrigue going on. Similar in approach to a Greek tragedy, as it is written here on the page, with wealth, corporate intrigue, and troubled relationship between two families at its center. He said, more himself like in Caprica to the 1980s primetime soap opera Dallas in space. Um, and obviously this was a story arc format show, so we had a story arc over the show. Now, um, it did eventually get 19 episodes, so you get a pretty good run if you go and watch them through in their entirety. Um, but the way the show aired, it was very unfortunate because 
We had the extended version of the pilot that be I watched it as a digital download. Um, and then from there, it ran for nine episodes, including the pilot, before it went on a mid-season hiatus, which also is something that kills shows in my mind, or it used to kill shows. The second half then began airing on October 5th, but unfortunately, on the 27th of October, Sci-Fi canceled the show and pulled the remaining five episodes from broadcast um, that was then aired in a burn-off marathon on January 4th, 2011. Um Obviously, you can get this on DVD. I don't know if this show is streaming at the moment anywhere, um, but I'm going to go be looking into this to see if I can't find it to rewatch because I've watched Battlestar Galactica through three times, and I'm really wanting to go do that again for personal reasons because i got some story stuff that I want to look at with what I'm building with the quantum technology background of the humans in The Weave and the Void. And this show has some elements, or at least... Um, Basically, I had some stuff, so I want to go back and rewatch this because of some of the post or pre, I should say pre-apocalyptic stuff that was going on with technology sort of before the fall of mankind. And I want to, I would love to refresh myself on this to see if there's any nuggets I can pull out from my own storyline. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on Caprica. I thought this was an amazing show. Um, drop your comments down below. If you like the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all those good things. If you want to support the video, you can drop a super thanks. You can also become a member of the Adventurers Guild, which is our special members community here on YouTube. Don't forget, I stream almost every single day of the week, mornings and afternoons slash evenings. We have a guest Discord down below, which also hosts our gaming community. And if you want to get into our storytelling and what we're doing with game development, the world of the Weave in the Void is what I've been working on with my brother and my wife since March of 2021. It is a 5th edition tabletop setting with the source book coming out on June 1st, 2022. But it's also a point-and-click adventure game that's set in that world. You can download the demo for that today. That's coming out later this year. And there's a book series that's being written in serialized format with chapters coming out twice a month. Um, it's a lot like, I like to think it's a lot like Dragonlance if you like that kind of stuff. Point and clicks a lot like King's Quest. So if you like those kind of things, you can also support via a subscription over at Patreon. So either way, hopefully we see you around in our community. Don't forget to check out the other videos in the playlist here for my favorite science fiction TV shows, and hopefully we'll see you in the next episode. Stay safe, everybody. Until next time, happy watching.